So welcome to Glen Etive here in the west coast of Scotland. It's absolutely mobs just now because it's a nice summer evening on a Saturday night. So there's loads of campers about. But luckily I found a little lay-by so I can set up my gear. And for this video I'm going to be reviewing the Move Ship Move Nomad Star Tracker. This is it, it's very tiny. So I'm going to wait till darkness here in the really dark skies of Scotland on the west coast. I'm surrounded by midges currently so you'll see me swatting my face. But yeah, the Nomad Move Ship Move Star Tracker, unbelievable. I've had one night using it up in Dalwini, up in the highlands of Scotland, and it was fantastic. So I'll show the results of that. But in this video, I'll kind of go through a wee bit of a more detailed review of the Nomad. And yeah, I think it's absolutely fantastic because it's so, so portable. This is all you need. Obviously this tripod and your camera, and you're good to go. So I'll go through more of it when it gets to darkness and how to pull or align it. So I thought to show you how to set it up during the daylight just so you can see everything but I'll obviously talk more about it at night as well and how practical it is. The product comes with a laser to pull or align it and plus the device and that's it. It's so easy to carry about. You do need another ball head as well um, so you just buy that yourself but take that ball head away and you've literally only just got a tiny little box and a little laser to transport about so it's very very easy. So how to set it up or how I set it up other people will have like little kind of alignment plates and stuff. I just use two ball heads because I've got a million of them and all you really do is get the laser. You can't see it just now because it's obviously in the light but you shoot a laser, points everywhere, you pop it in a wee hole over there in the device, screw it in. So when you press that button the laser comes through another little kind of keyhole at the top of the device. The motor comes with a little square bracket. All you do, put this square bracket on another ball head, make sure it's nice and tight and all you do, press the button so there's a laser shooting through the device and simply point that, that laser to Polaris which for instance say it's up there so you just go na 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 na, point it over there, lock it in, it's, very, it's a very very powerful laser, you'll see it in the video, very powerful laser pointing to Polaris, that means you know the axis of the motor is now polar aligned and then all you have to do is attach your camera to this ball head and that's it. How easy is that? The easiest sort of device I've ever had for star tracking. I used to use the Ioptron which was fantastic. It was a bit bulky and pretty heavy and it was pretty much you know twice the size of it and twice the weight of it uh, and this just saves so much weight and so much space in your bag. Little device, tiny little square and a little laser and that's it. Just two ball heads which I'm sure if you're a photographer you've got loads of ball heads about. And obviously the Nomad comes with it's the same speed so I think Ioptron and like and, um, Star Adventures they've got different speeds of rotation. This is just one rotation so you either point you put it on the northern hemisphere or the southern hemisphere obviously it'll kind of rotate either way and then yeah good to go. I do have to say I was setting this from Move Shoot Move to try out in the Scottish dark skies so I'm very very thankful for Move Shoot Move to send me this and yeah I'm absolutely 100% sold on it. Literally they just gave me it and just said do your honest review of, of it and just enjoy so I used it once and I was like wow that's actually really good. It's definitely kind of the, the future of Star Trek and just something really really tiny. I don't know why Ioptrons and Star Adventures are so heavy and so bulky. This can still hold a good amount of weight so if you've got a big lens um, but yeah it's just the easiest thing to align and just carry in your bag. So you'll see it when it's at dark and I'll pretty much just set it up from straight again and then take a few pictures and I'll probably like zoom into the pictures and see how pin sharp it is but the shots I got in Dalwini of the Milky Way using this device they were absolutely pin sharp there was no star trailing at all so it's blown me away how good and useful it is and yeah this is my star tracker uh, from now on so let's just wait for darkness so we're in September so it's September like the 7th really really dark skies been a nice wee heat wave over Scotland so yeah in Glen Etive I've shot quite a lot of photography down the road before but never actually in the Glen Etive so there's a lovely little river Etive going along this Glen so I'm going to try and hopefully get the Milky Way nice detailed Milky Way with this Nomad all right so we have darkness now let's get set up and show you how easy it is to set up the Nomad Whoa! 
Okay, so, excuse the dodgy filming, I'm trying to get Polaris in view as well, uh, so you can see the, the laser going up to Polaris. So I've got the Nomad here, as you can see, and all I've to do, put it into the ball head, secure it nice and tightly, without trying to blind you with my head torch. Yes, I know I should have a red uh, head torch, I have left it at home, <laughs> typically. Um, then get the laser, which has got a nice rechargeable battery. I keep the battery upside down just to save the charge. And then pop it in the right way. Da, da, da. Hopefully move that out of the way of the scope. Hopefully if I press this, it should go. Please it's not out of charge. Okay, so I have came to one fault and I will give, get footage um, of the laser but this is twice this has happened now the battery does not last long at all with the laser so, no, it's dead I charged, I only used it what, well, maybe an hour in Dalwini um, and obviously it wasn't on for an hour but yeah, everything's right and it it took a wee bit, a while to charge, uh, but it's it's now dead again, which is really annoying. So I have to kind of pull her line by eye, which is okay because I do like landscape after photography, so it's quite wide angle. So you don't need to be really polar lined very good. You know that was maybe half an hour, and you know maybe five ten minutes use of it up in Delwini, and it's already dead. But it does normally work, and I will get footage. I'll pop it on the video. I'll take it. I'll take footage of the laser another night. you're supposed to do obviously is screw the laser onto the Wii, onto the Nomad and then press the button and then it, it will shoot a big green laser right to the sky and then all you're doing is just pointing that laser to Polaris which should be kind of up there so as soon as that hits the Polaris you lock it in and then you go and get your camera and pop it on this which I'll do just now so I'll manually just kind of roughly align it, luckily I'm shooting pretty wide angle so I'll kind of align this angle to Polaris just roughly, it's not going to be the best pol polar alignment but because I'm doing really wide angle like 14mm uh, it should be fine so yeah. So I've just manually polar aligned it just with the rough eye so apologies about that uh, laser but honestly this is an honest review so now I've got the 50mm lens on just with my Sony a7S, just popped it on, so the Nomad is on a tripod, so tripod, ball head to Nomad, Nomad to another ball head to camera, that's all you need. So you just need two ball heads. <laughs> my head torch might be dying. This would be a great night, everything's going to die. So all you have to do is turn on the Nomad, so there's just a little switch at the side that says uh, N and S, so Northern Hemisphere, Southern Hemisphere, make sure I'm in the Northern Hemisphere and then just point your camera obviously wherever you're wanting to shoot and then you just start taking pictures like you would with any other star tracker so obviously it's so easy, pop it on the ball head, pull or line it with the laser, put your camera on it, easy, good to go, really really easy so I'll take a picture, so I'm going to use a 50mm uh, which is quite zoomed in so we'll really see so it's this is not going to be an absolute honest one because we're not fully polar aligned but for wide uh, wide field astrophotography like probably many of my you know many of you guys watching this probably are you're probably wide field astrophotographers like me this is all you need you you really don't i hardly even with ioptron i didn't polar align at all really so for wide field astrophotography you probably could get away with not even using the, the laser. So it's just so easy, so lightweight. I'm just going to zoom into the Milky Way core at f 1.8 obviously. The lowest f number. 
think it's pretty sharp. Uh, right, so this is a minute exposure, so I'm just going to let that roll. Tracking shots as well, I always do a, la a landscape shot and then a star shot, obviously, a sky shot, just because obviously your camera's moving, like my camera's moving just now. So this is the sky shot, get good detail in the Milky Way core, and then all, all I'll do is just switch off the switch and then take a landscape shot and then that's pretty much it. So Really annoying with the laser, but I'll definitely put some footage of me playing a bit with the laser, just maybe in the back garden, just so you get an idea. Yeah, couldn't be happier with it though. Really lightweight and just really simple. Just eases everything. Because if you're into landscape astrophotography, which you should, which should probably are, um, you know how much equipment you need and how big a bags you need and all tripods. So this doesn't take up much space at all. Um, so this will be cool. So even though this is just a rough pole alignment, I'll put the pictures up just now and there we go, perfect. There's a lovely picture there. So this is just a rough polar alignment, just with my eye. I mean, <laughs> for back, that's a minute exposure at 50 millimeter, and they're absolutely pin sharp. They're a tiny bit out of focus, actually, but that would be my bad. There we go. But pin sharp, they're just round, perfectly round. And yeah, I'll pop the result of this one. So this is a manual polar line, no laser, and um, yeah, here's the shot. So what I'm going to do just now is kind of jump around this wee valley and uh, get like different compositions. So I'm with the 14mm lens now, so even the star trails are just not going to be noticeable at all really, even doing this sort of rough polar alignment. So yeah, 14mm and yeah, looking at the galactic core, it's just coming around the corner of this Monroe. There we go, two, ISO 2000, I don't know, for a minute. Normally I go for about ISO 3, 3 4000 at uh, 1 minute 30 seconds, 90 seconds. Um, so I'll change it to that setting, but I'll show you the result, the foreground that I'm going to work with. And I'll just jump about a wee bit and pretty much shoot through the night for when the Milky Way gets into the into the right position. But yeah, can't fault the star tracker at all because it's so lightweight and it's just easy to just easy to use. Really, it's perfect for landscape astrophotographer. It's definitely for the landscape astrophotographer. Uh, just annoying about that laser, but honestly, with my with the results probably I'll get tonight. I'll review the pictures. Um, I'll zoom in and see all the pin shot stars. But yeah, with the images that I'll take at 40 millimeter, I probably don't even need the laser. So definitely recommend getting this. If there we go, perfect. Hold on, I'll show you, show you this image. Definitely recommend getting this if you're diff, if you're a landscape astrophotographer and you shoot wide angle, because it's just perfect. I'll just show you this shot. Okay, I see it there. You can roughly, you can roughly see it there. So it's slightly underexposed, so I'll play a bit with exposure, jump about the valley, and I'll show you the results just now. Thank you. 